can go away, can't they? Because I can hate my grandmother because she wouldn't put me in the will. <laughs> What's up with that? I can hate my sister because she's my sister. <laughs> and eventually that love comes back. I can hate my parents because I don't know, because they don't know anything. My parents don't know anything. I know it all. And that love can go away. But the one love that is constant in our lives is the agape love. I read this week, for the author of 1 John, words and speech are inadequate expressions of love. God in Christ demonstrates agape love in truth and action. And as his children, we should do the same. We know, we know love by this, that Jesus laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for one another. Similarly, in John 15, Jesus uses his example of self-giving love as the motivation for his followers to follow suit. No one has greater love than this, to lay down his one, one's life for one's friend. And we heard it in our gospel. I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life on my own accord for you, for nobody else, for you. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to lay down your life for somebody else. Mike is thinking really hard back there. <laughs> I can see it, Mike. I may remember Columbine. Remember the young lady who was who stood there with one of the guys pointing a gun at her and said, Are you a Christian? What did she say? Yes. And what happened to her? Are you willing to do that, or are you willing to run away from Peter? Not me! I'm not one of his. I'm not all of my Christian. God laid down his life. Jesus laid down his life for each and every one of us. Real love is not only manifested in action, but rooted in truth. It benefits not only those who receive it, but also those who practice it because it helps us know that we belong to or are the truth. Although the author is not saying that we our belonging to God depends on our love for God or other, it implies that our acts of love are born out of the life of Christ. Just as everyone knows Jesus' disciples by their love for one another, so we Christians know that we are living in the truth by our actions. Actions that emulate Jesus' sacrificial love reassure us that Christ abides in us and that his spirit is at work in us. How do we show that love? And as we talked this past Monday in our Bible study, we talked about man house. And I always use Judy as an example because Judy is that bright light at the door handing out the bags. And I never hear Judy say a bad word to anyone that comes to the door and get a bag. And she takes time to listen to them. And I told you, Jason, I'm going to use you as an example all the time. But do we do that? Do we lift each other up? Do we see that in a person? The other day I was heading, Thursday, I was heading up to Columbia for Alumni Day, last Alumni Day at the seminary, because they're moving it to Hickory in January. And I stopped at a QT in Orangeburg, and I had my Florida Life shirt on, and I went to get a QT big soda. I was already traveling three hours, I didn't need <laughs> And I walked in and I said, this is a refill, which I knew was going to be about a dollar and a quarter. Layla looks at me and she said, you have a blessed day. I'm not thinking. I'm not my money. She goes, no, no, no. She took my hand, folded it, and said, you have a blessed day. I said, no, you don't need it. She goes, no, you have a blessed day. Are we, can we take a gift and go, thanks? No, I couldn't. I was like, no, no, no. Thank you, and you too. 
Do we show the act of love to one another? Or do we use the words? As in 1 John. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. Do we use that truth and action? Or do we just give lip service? How many of you remember the movie Fade? How many of you watched it like a million times when your kids were little? So as we were in Bible study, I started thinking about faith. So I went back and had to find the script on it so I could pull it down. And at this one scene, the kind of the head female sheep is talking to Babe about Rex and why Rex is so angry. He's the sheep dog. And so she says, the winter rains brought a great flood to the valley. Rex and the boss got most of the flock onto the high ground. Then Rex went back to look for the strings. He found them. They had been stranded by the rising water. He tried to herd them across to safety, but they wouldn't budge. Too afraid and too stupid to save their own skin. It was freezing cold, and the water kept rising. Rex stayed with them through the night. Love. By morning, the sheep had drowned. And when they found Rex, he was barely alive. Babe says, oh, Mom. And then Fly, who was, I believe, the duck, said, two weeks rest in front of the fire, saw him back on his feet. But his hearing was never the same again. He'd never, he'd never want anyone to know, but he's almost totally dead. And so as I read that, and was reading through it in other parts, and he stayed with them through the night, keeping watch over them, keeping them safe. And Thursday, Bishop Strickland preached at the seminary, and he used the gospel text from Mark that we heard a couple weeks ago. And he said the thing in the text that we don't realize, or maybe we gloss over, is in verse 7. It says, go, quick go, tell his disciples of Peter that he's going ahead of them to Galilee. And that's where you'll see him, just as he told you. That's love. How many of us have worried, been depressed, been in a pit that you didn't think you could get out? And you sit there and you go, why and where? But Jesus went ahead. <laughs> He's ahead in that pit and he's sitting there with you. He said they went ahead in this great love. The time when maybe you had cancer, you got diagnosed with cancer. They went ahead to the doctor, gave him knowledge, and said that this is how we're going to take care of it. And you walk into that doctor's office, and the doctor says, We got a plan. He's gone ahead of you. When you think times are terrible, he's waiting, waiting for you. And in our gospel today, it talks about that love. And showing love. And as Fred was raving it, the Spirit was working. And in Matthew 25, it says when Jesus separates the goats and the sheep, and he looks at the sheep and he says, when you saw me in prison, you came to me, and I was sick, and you came to me, and I was hungry, and you fed me, and when I was naked, you clothed me, and they said, when did you do this? When did we do this? And he said, when you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. And then in Matthew 22, he says, they're asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he says, the greatest commandment is? Did we miss the first part? I heard a little bit. It must have been like Pentecost. I remember hearing it in our own language. We love God and then we love our neighbor. Action, not in lip. It's 
Fred read in our first and our second lesson. Jesus' death on, on our behalf is the clearest demonstration of divine love. This is the very love we share with others, not just through words, but especially through our deeds. In sharing such love, we fulfill God's commandment to love one another. Amen.
Let your spirit flow through this place and enlighten us to go out and share the love. We lift up our police and EMS and fire departments and their families. We lift up our military and the veterans and their families. And we just say thank you. God of grace. And to your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusted in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace. Where is your trust? That's peace, Lynn. And there proclaim 
and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, blessed it, and gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This is the new covenant, my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remember it, therefore, as life-giving death and res glorious resurrection. We await your promised promise life for all of this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us to say our kingdom.
$200 of getting to our uh, gutter fund project, so please help get us over the top. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there was a flower chart in the back. We are accepting flower charts.
Thank you. Thank you.